Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modelling Cafe. My name is Jamie and welcome to part two of the Airfix Lightning Project. So as I mentioned in part one in the introduction I'm going to be using a resin replacing cockpit and this is from KMC so it's a very old one. It's a really good idea to prime resin and photo etch parts so here I am using Mr. Servicer 1500 which was thinned with the leveling thinner and uh, just building up the opaque coat there and it's going to really help to make the paint stick in the end. The sidewalls didn't quite fit I've got a feeling it was something to do with me rather than the kit but the cockpit mounting sections are a little bit vague so you can see they're just an L-shaped bit of plastic card just to help and then once the primer is dry I went in with some of the Alclad gloss black primer and this is going to be uh, so I can make full shadows and things like that just to add a bit of depth in the cockpit it's actually quite a small opening the seat is very prominent that's going to block out a lot of light and the canopy doesn't go up too far really to allow a load of light in but there you can see the sort of black undercoat the resin instrument panel is quite nice and that also had the black undercoat and now we're pretty much ready for the main colour. So I'm using the US Navy grey blue here from MRP. And in hindsight, I think that was a little bit too blue. It looked great in the, uh, in the bottle. And I think in hindsight, I've got some dark sea grey. I should have really used that to uh, simulate the Admiralty grey, as it's called, the interior of the cockpit. So it's a kind of a medium grey colour, but this, this ended up a little bit too blue, unfortunately, but hey ho. So you can see the angle I'm spraying there, I'm spraying down from the top. So that's going to help with the black to enhance those false shadows. And because it is quite a small cockpit and a small opening, you kind of really want to try and exaggerate that. Otherwise it is going to look just too, too dark when looking at it because cockpits obviously are a focal point of any model and you can see I'm avoiding the areas of the side consoles they're going to be black so I'm just with a quite tight spray pattern just spraying right up to the edge and we'll come in and fix that with a brush later but the MRP it's a really good paint for cockpits because it dries rock hard it's verging on a gloss finish anyway so it's going to take a wash really nicely and not forgetting the control column of course right as i just mentioned we need to take care of the side consoles, so just using a bit of Amurv MIG black, slightly thin, just to help it flow a bit easier. We're just going to go in with a brush and just touch up that overspray. So that's the consoles done, now moving on to the grip on the control column, which actually ended up interfering with the instrument panel a little bit. So. Being resin, that's quite an easy fix. I just blasted it with a hairdryer and just bent it back. And now the detail on the other side. So this includes the throttle quadrant. I actually ended up knocking off the throttles at one stage, so they had to be glued back in place. And it's quite awkward here because we've got the top console and then underneath it you can just see there's a sort of smaller secondary console below and it's a bit of a fiddle to get in there but you know we can manage it And 
and it's important to take your time as you can see I'm doing because we need a little bit of accuracy and if we muck it up it doesn't matter you can just remove it with a bit of thinner or even go back and spray and uh, touch it back up again now the leather for the uh, the gaiter on the bottom of the control column and I used an ammo of MIG rust colour which simulates the sort of tan leather quite nicely I think now for the switches I picked these out in white in real life they were grey but again we want the contrast so white was my preferred paint here and I'm just trying to touch the top of the of the switch and the buttons And I just thought I'd do this in real time. Um, I know it's a little bit dull, <laughs> but um, I thought it useful just to highlight how long it's going to take, really. And there is the finished console. It's not too bad. Good enough for this project, anyway. Right, you'll note I've painted the green... Um, uh, I don't know what it is, some kind of air conduct or something, and the map case. So that's been painted as well. And now I'm going in with a wash. This is Ammo of MIG Black Wash, the PLW, Panel Line Wash range. And there's the instrument panel, hand painted. And what I did is, obviously you can see there, just added a little bit of gloss. And that comes out not too bad either. And there's the instrument panel blued in position. You can see how close the control column is there. And that's after I, uh, I bent it back. And you can see all the super glue all over my hands and going in the instrument panel. Okay, onto the seat. And this is a really nice molding. And what I like about this is the straps aren't hanging down. They're actually over the top of the seat and clipped in. And when we unstrap from an ejection seat, the shoulder harness straps always get clipped in to the little, um, the little sort of female clips on the headbox. And this seat is one of the few that actually molds that. So it's really nice. So it's been primed in uh, the Mr. Surfacer and now I'm just giving it a satin coat of MRP black. I didn't want it gloss black. I wanted it satin. It's going to take the uh, it's going to take the hand painting with the acrylics much nicer. So having this satin base is going to be quite handy when we come to do the hand painting with the acrylics. So the back pad is green, and I just picked. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember which green I used. I just picked a random green that sort of matched some of the photos. Uh, all the acrylics are ammo of MIG. So using it slightly thinned, we're just going to put down a thinned coat all over the, the, the top of the back pad, which actually covers some of the internal harness retraction strap mechanism and then the lower back pad, the kind of lumbar support and the seat cushion so you can see it's not quite an opaque coat and that's what we want, we just want to use that black undercoat just to create a little bit of false shadow, but we're going to come in with shadows and highlights in a moment anyway. And there's the base coat done. Um, 
Okay, on with the highlights and the low lights now. So, lighting up the base colour with a bit of white and a bit of yellow. And really quite thin paint. And this is kind of a thicker painting technique, although I'm useless at painting, painting with little floats. But I'm just going in and I'm just adding along the highlights the lightened, thinned colour and I'll do multiple layers lightening each time and there you can see the final effect creating that sort of light and shadow and it is exaggerated because again like I said the cockpit is going to be quite dark and then with some very light colour a little bit more opaque I just went round and I just highlighted all the edges and especially on the um, on the seat pad itself So here I am. This is this is almost a yellow. It's such a light green. And just as I said, just just doing the very edges. So where the light would catch the relatively hard edge, we're just kind of fooling the eye into creating that highlight. almost wet dry brushing I suppose. I'm just picking out some of the folds just to exaggerate again the effect and then just a quick dry brush over the top which I don't think really did much but there was hardly any paint left anyway. Looks exaggerated but in the cockpit with all the straps done looks good. Okay, ammo dry brush paints, just to do the actual body of the um, of the seat itself, picking out all the detail. Now this may look exaggerated, but I will be putting a black wash over the whole thing, which is gonna blend everything in. And these dry brush paints are, <laughs> they're brilliant actually, so I highly recommend trying them if you haven't already. Now for the aforementioned shoulder harness and as I said it um, the harness actually goes over the top of the seat and clips in makes it much easier to strap in so with a, a buff color again from ammo of MIG we just pick out the raised detail and then the lap belts were actually a blue color and quite a quite a bright blue as well so again mixing up ammo paints because the only blue I had was quite dark blue actually so I did a, um, a fair bit of white in there just to lighten it up and then we'll do the same shading effect here so taking light and blue I'm just going to pick out the raised bits just to create that depth So it's important to keep the paint quite thin. It's gonna help it flow better and you don't want it too opaque. And I'm just gonna go in with the highlights again, this time on the buff areas. So in some of the straps, they're multi-layered and obviously they cross over on the top. So it's easy to pick out the raised detail there. And on that headrest, just picking out the edges really and just building up that 3D effect. Okay, back to the seat itself, and there is some silver bits. Again, not that you're gonna see these, but I guess it adds to the overall effect. And the 
buckles as well, of course. And the oxygen bottle was picked out in a semi-gloss back, but that's on the back and you can't see it anyway. And this is the lanyard for the drogue chute that goes into the scissor shackle. So that was picked out in white because it is white cord. And I'm not really sure what this other one was on the left hand side, but that was also picked out. And then the, it's either the manual separation handle or the EO2, the emergency oxygen handle on the left hand side, that's gonna be yellow and black stripes. So that was given a moment ago for white while I had it. And that's that other lanyard, not really sure what that's for. Don't have that on our modern seats, but I thought I'll pick it out in white because it adds a nice bit of contrast. Now it looked like these uh, sort of bits here that keep the harness in uh, in place were a leather colour, so they were picked out in a leather colour before I came in with a wash on the buff parts. So this is Trax wash, which is a nice dark orangey brown tone. And that was just touched into the recesses and the nooks and crannies. And then what we'll do is we'll allow that to dry and then we'll just blend that in. I find this is, this is much easier using enamels and oils for this sort of thing than, than the darker acrylics, because you get a much I find it's much easier to get a soft merging blend with the uh, oils and enamels. And you can see this is enamel being a, being a wash from ammo than, uh, than the acrylics. And then we'll just go in with a little bit of thinner and it is a little bit of thinner just to blend that, blend that away. I can see it's taking quite a while to do this seat, but it really is worth it because the, if the cockpit is a focal point of the uh, focal point of the model, then the seat is the focal point of the cockpit. Now the yellow and black stripes, so the yellow's been painted, and it was much easier drawing that in with a pen than uh, than a fine paintbrush. And the last thing was just a few little red placards goes on. There are some decals that I could have used here, but actually with the straps going over the head box, it makes it, uh, it makes it a little bit too difficult really. So I just left those off and just painted in that. And the pull handle, that was just bent from a piece of wire and then just a little bit of lead foil for the red cover. And that is the seat finish. So. I just finished off with a satin varnish over the carcass of the seat and there it is. I'm really pleased with how that turned out actually. So that's it, that's the end of the cockpit. So in part three, the next one, we're going to move on to the construction. So a little bit of lead went in in the nose to avoid the dreaded tail sitting. Once again, I used black super glue. Mr. Surfacer was required in lots of the joints, but that wasn't enough for the wing. So uh, we needed a bit of filler. So quite a lot of filling to come on the next episode. So join me in that one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.